and welcome to your Go Market Update and Charts of Interest for the 10th of November 2022. Mike Smith's Go Market to quite an interesting day. Over the last 24 hours, lots of things to talk about. Obviously, US equities suffered broad based losses last night. Really, the midterm elections didn't deliver as was expected. Both the House and the Senate still in the balance. It is expected that the Republicans will just sneak a win in the House, but the Senate is too close to call. So that's upset markets a little bit in terms of that uncertainty. And of course, we've got caution prior to that inflation data that's due out of the US later as well. US futures are mildly positive in Asia and Asian indices are following that weaker US lead, though they are off their lows. The ASX is down around about 0.3%. It was at around about 0.7% to the downside at its worst for today. It seems to have flatlining now, but it'll be interesting to see how it moves into the close. European equity futures are suggesting a lower open, not surprisingly, and the US dollar index bounce off support, but is lower in Asia. So it looks as though there's a temporary bounce on the back of that equity weakness, uh, but doesn't look sustainable at this stage, uh, possibly waiting for some more clarity on those midterms. The euro managed to hold on to parity despite that US dollar strength yesterday and looks as though it's moving higher again in Asia today. Gold is holding above 1700 and all continues to pull back down around 7% over the last couple of days on China lockdown concerns and potential demand destruction. Copper, however, in the commodity space is higher and is testing 370. It looks a bit like an ascending triangle if you have a look at the chart. And the VIX has moved higher with its continued uncertainty around election results and what the CPI might do to markets. So it has moved back from that 25 level up towards 28. It's around about 27 at the moment. One of the major stories of the last 24 hours is in the crypto space. Bitcoin has smashed through long term 18600 support. It is down an additional 10% in trading today, hitting two year lows. Uh, Ethereum is exactly the same as with every other crypto down around 30% in the last week or so, so quite a significant. It does look as though it's paused in Asia for now. It is the last week of earnings, so we're getting a few dribs and drabs of S&P 500 companies reporting over the next couple of days. But markets are really bracing for that inflation data and hoping for clarity on the US midterms. We do have some Australian inflation expectations. These were higher than what economists had predicted. We've got the Euro Economic Bulletin out later. And of course, on top of that inflation data, we've got weekly jobs coming out of the US. So quite a big night again ahead with lots possibly to be resolved. A couple of charts that caught our eye today. IGO are looking pretty important. These are the outperformers in the nickel space. You can see there after this bounce off around about 14.55, we're retesting the resistance we hit about three weeks ago at around about 16.40. We've actually tested that in the smallest trend. You can see we did gap down but we're, since then, we've moved up significantly throughout the course of the session so far. So it'll be interesting to see where this ends up. But that's undoubtedly a positive response in a day which isn't looking particularly good. In the FX space, the Aussie Yen is looking significantly under pressure on the shorter term time frame. You can see it is now testing this level at around about 93, 96 or so through that key 94. If we breach this, then in the first instance, we could see a drop of around about 30 pips, but possibly if this momentum continues down around 50. So we think this is one to watch today. They'll be very careful with FX trades today. We think they could be thrown around a little bit whilst we await more information from the midterms and that data out later. Trade safe and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.